So in part one, we have already created and styled the TK Inter graphic user interface for this Python Caesar Cipher application. This is part two, and we're gonna make it work by adding commands and also a little bit of validation. So this is actually what we made in part one. So this is our user interface. But in this part, we want to actually make all of this interface work and we want to also validate the input. So we don't want the user to be able to enter letters or whatever. We want the user to be able to just enter numbers within this range, etc., etc. So this is what we're going to do in this video. By the way, in this video, I'm not going to explain you the logic of the Caesar cipher because I've already explained everything in another video where I actually created it without the GUI. So I'm just going to use the encrypt and decrypt function that we created there. And I'll leave the link in the description down below and in the cards up above if you want to check that out. So I'm just going to copy and paste the function. So here you've got the function. Now this is a method because I've added self here. As you can see here, the function is 20 lines of code long. But as I said, if you want to learn more about this, about the Caesar cipher, how to write this function, go and watch the other video. Then, first thing we're going to do is we want to add some validation so that the user can't enter letters or wrong numbers as the key. To validate what the user enters as key, we need to create a method that returns true when the value is valid and false when the value is not valid. So let's actually do this. So key entry validation like that and we want to use self and value value here is the value that the entry will have if you allow the change meaning let's say that the value of the entry right now is one two and the user presses three you would get one two three right so in this case you here value will be one two three so if you allow one two three and you return true then the value of the entry will be one two three and in the entry you'll see one two three but let's say that one to three is not allowed. Then you return false. And that means that in the entry, you will have one, two. The three will be ignored because the final value with the new character that the user was trying to actually add is not valid. So you don't add it and you keep the old value. So one, two, basically. I hope that makes sense. So if the value is an empty string, then self button. I'm going to set the state to disabled and same thing for the encrypt. Basically, if you don't have the key, you won't be able to actually click on encrypt and decrypt because you don't have a key basically and you return true. Perfect. Because basically you're allowing an empty string because you're allowed to actually delete everything from the key and start writing the key again. Otherwise, if you don't add this, you won't be able to actually delete everything from the key entry. Then I'm going to try to convert the value to an integer. And if I can't, which means that I get the value error, that means that the user is trying to actually enter something that is not an integer. So maybe a b one for example this is not convertible so i return false and i say this is not a valid input so let's not allow it then this is the first thing that we're going to check let's actually do this if this is convertible then we want to check if the value is within the range so like that or value self now letters return false so if the key needs to be like 1 through 25 and the user tries to enter 35, this is not allowed. So we return false. So if the value goes through this without returning, that means that the, the value is actually valid. So we are going to do something like, let's actually copy this from here. And we're going to do this like, and here, normal and normal. And we return true, of course, otherwise <laughs> nothing is allowed. Now we have a validate method in place and we can register it and add it to our entry. So let's go here. We've got the key entry. So before the key entry, we're going to do something like self key entry validation command self button container 
register. I'm gonna register it to its container basically. Self key entry validation like this, perfect. And then to actually make it work, we need to do something like here validate key this validation command and then p like this. So basically, when we enter whatever in the entry, then this thing here is called. So if you use this code here, the value that the entry would have, if you allow the change, it would be passed automatically to the key entry validation function, as I explained earlier. And in our case, it'll be the value parameter of that function. So now we can actually try to run this and see if everything works as expected. So let's say we want to add one, this works, 25, this works, 26. I'm pressing the six, but it doesn't let me enter. When you use backspace, in this case, the value is an empty string. As you can see, now the encrypt and decrypt buttons are disabled because we've done it here. Do you remember? If we didn't have this, you would be able to do this, but then I'm actually pressing the backspace. It doesn't let me delete this. Why? Because the value that I would get by actually deleting this would be an empty string. And in this case, I'm not returning true. And this means that for Python, in this case, the empty string is not valid and it doesn't let me do this. So this is really, really important. And also let's try to add three and then A, B, C, whatever letter, it doesn't let me do this. So this is working as expected. As you can see now, this is enabled. And then if we don't have anything, these are disabled, as you can see, perfect. Now we need to create the functions to actually encrypt and decrypt. But before we get to that, please, if you're enjoying the video, give it a thumbs up and also subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. I really, really appreciate it. So first of all, let's do this here. And we're going to create def encrypt command self. So we're going to have the key self key entry. And we're going to get the value in the entry the key entry basically, then the text, which is the text that we want to encrypt and decrypt. So text widget, and we're going to get that starting from 1.0 and up to the end, then self dot text widget. We want to delete everything from the text widget like this. And then we also want to write the encrypted message basically. So same thing, we start from there and then we call here self.encrypt decrypt. We're going to pass the text, pass E, which means encrypt. And then we're going to convert the key to an integer like that. Now we can actually copy this and create the decrypt command. And here we're going to change D. Now that we have those methods, we can actually use them as commands for the buttons. So here, button decrypt, command, decrypt command. And also here we've got command. This is the encrypt button. So self.encrypt command like this. And let's now run it and see if everything is working as expected. So A, B, C, D, and we want the key too. We encrypt it, we decrypt it, perfect. Hello, this is a secret message. We use the key three. So encrypt, this is what we get. Decrypt, hello, this is a secret message. As you can see, everything is working as expected. Like that, perfect. So now on the screen, you should see another video about Python and TK Inter. So go and check that out. Also, if you found this video helpful, please give it a like and also consider subscribing for more videos like this. And I'll see you soon. Bye.